The views expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of Saga 960 AM or its management. Live from Toronto to the world. Josh! 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 This is Josh Holiday Live. Talk that rocks. The public needs to be informed. Josh may surprise us. Got an opinion? Dial 647-6-YO-JOSH. When you hear him, you're like, what? Josh Holiday Live starts now. Yes. We are live March 4th, 2022. I'm Josh. Hi. I am nothing if not honest on this show. I always try and be truthful, be honest about uh, what's happening, both with my opinions and, and just myself in general. And I will get this out of the way right off the top. Um, the last week or so, I've had a weird feeling, uh, and I tried to describe it, and I, I thought to myself, uh, this is a malaise, and then I was like, do I even know what that, that means? So I looked it up, and it says, a general feeling of discomfort, illness, or uneasiness whose exact cause is difficult to identify, and I thought, well, that's, that pretty much sums it up. I've been feeling a sense of malaise, uh, not just mentally, but a, a little bit physically. I've had this sense of like, I don't, I don't feel quite right. I do have uh, a history of depression. As a, as a child, I was, uh, I was not as a child, I guess early teens, uh, I was diagnosed with, with uh, dysthymia, which is a, a low level depression where you don't really feel the highs. You're, you're never really truly happy and then i've had throughout my lifetime incidences of what they call major depression and that's that's sort of a depression that lasts lasts for a little while and combined with a dysthymia they call it a double depression sometimes it's i think the worst case i had was uh years and years ago and i literally could couldn't eat food for about three months It, it, it felt like waking up with the flu every day, you you actually felt a physical sickness and and spent a lot of time in bed and and at once I started coming out of it, I had lost uh, twenty five pounds. So it was it was pretty serious. Now this in the in the years since and and uh, up until now, there's there's I've been on sort of the edge of it where I feel kind of like it might be coming on the darkness, as I sometimes call it. Um, but I've learned coping mechanisms, ways of, of talking to myself, sort of self-talk using reasoning and trying, you know, reason why this is happening and, and try and, uh, confront it sort of in your head, sort of working it through and know that you can, you can, you have some control. Uh, and I, I try also to look at what the source of this malaise is and i think it's a number of things on a personal level um i think i've felt pretty isolated with 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 the pandemic and just in general i'm I'm a guy who 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 really keeps to himself so i don't have a, a giant circle of friends or anything like that that i spend a lot of time with um you know the weather is is been kind of blah uh, we did get through January, February, which is nice. Um, and the pandemic is still happening and, and, and s- there's that. And then I think in a sense, sometimes I feel a little bit stuck in terms of um, what I'm doing with my life. Um, so that's sort of a, a really vague look at, at 
personally what what may be uh, affecting me. But I think in a broader sense, there are so many things happening in the world, and I often get I get down about it, even though there's a lot of things I can't control. But it just it just feels like oh you know the world is going to hell. And I, I, I take it personally. You know, it, it, it affects me in a, in a very uh, strong way. And, and you look at what's happening in uh, in Ukraine with the Russian invasion. And, and you look at this madman, this, this Putin, and he really is a guy that I don't think is going to give up until in, until the end. Like, he, he's, he's kind of backed himself into a corner and... It feels almost like he's not quite mentally there, and he has the power over nuclear weapons. And once nuclear weapons are used, it's kind of mutual self-destruction situation for the world. So that eats at me, as does, does just sort of the the suffering that's happening at his hands, and and the fact that it's happening at all. And then we look at what's happening in the states and how this year we will see whether dem- democracy survives. If if the Republicans take the uh, take the the, the Senate or the, or, the, or Congress, um, you're going to see democracy erode rather quickly. They're trying as hard as they can to erode it with with election laws in 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 localities like texas and florida and then there's what's happening here at home with doug ford the worst premier since mike harris and probably worse populist buffoon every week there's a new story that comes out that sheds more light on how badly Doug Ford has handled his role as leadership of Ontario. This week, the news came out that they had $4.4 billion $4.4 billion so $4,000 million dollars unspent on the people of Ontario. That money could have been used for health care, education, helping us get through the pandemic in a better way, but it just sat unused. And Doug Ford's not afraid to spend our money on a huge ad campaign. Television, radio, internet. It's disguised as a as a yay Ontario ad, but there's no mistaking that it's an ad for Doug Ford as we come upon a provincial election. So he's spending mine and your money to self-promote before an election. And yet he, he didn't spend the money that he had available to him for the province. And before the pandemic hit, he was set to cut health care, cut education, Christine Elliott, she decided she's not going to run in the uh, the provincial election, and and I assume she'll probably go to a corporate health entity, who the Ford government has has helped and coddled through this pandemic. And the problem with the provincial election, and it's, it's the same is true on the national level even the, the city level. Um, in Canada, we, ha- we have three, three main parties, and then there's, there's a fourth, uh, the Green Party, which, which is still in there most of the time, but generally there's the three majors. In the States, there's two, so it's either a, a one or the other. It's a fairly binary choice, and the majority is... is is what wins. Whereas here, it's a little more complex, and it's unfortunate that our voting system doesn't reflect 
how we vote and how our system is set up. A, a poll came out. Poll took place between February 25th and 27th. And it was basically a voting intentions poll. Who do you intend to vote for in the upcoming provincial election? The leading contender is the Ontario PC party with 39%. But in saying that they're the leader, that's very disingenuous. Because people who vote NDP and Liberal tend to vote more progressively, but their vote is pretty much divided, and in this case, divided evenly. 27% Liberal, 27% NDP, which adds up to about 54%. So there's 54% of the electorate, plus the Green Party is three, so let's, let's say 57%. don't want Doug Ford in. But because the Liberals and NDP's votes will be split, it feels like that's what's going to happen. The other thing that we're sort of forced to do as it gets closer is rather than voting for someone, we're voting against someone. And in this case, there's a lot of people who don't like what Doug Ford is doing, and rightfully so. He's terrible. He's at the He's at the beck and call of the corporate interests. He he doesn't care about the people of the province. He's a populist. And so as it gets closer to the election, we have to figure out how can can progressive voters get someone who reflects the progressive nature of the people of this province, the vast majority of the people who, who are not Doug Ford fans. So a lot of times it comes down to, well, let's let's do strategic voting. Who is most likely to knock him off? And in in this uh, survey's case, it's it's kind of frustrating because the liberals and NDP are split exactly evenly. So sometimes you if you see one or the other a little bit ahead, you think, okay, well, we're going to have to uh, vote for the one that's that's most likely to topple this. Uh, this Doug Ford mess. It is Josh Holiday Live. You can call any time with your opinion if you agree or disagree. It's 6476-YO-JOSH. 647-696-5674. Take your opinions. So that's kind of the choice is, is to strategically vote. So if you're a uh, uh, NDP, you may you may vote for Liberal just because you want to prevent Doug Ford from getting in. And the same thing is true of, of the, the national elections. There's a lot of people who I think would like to see change at the top. We are a progressive country. We don't want to see the conservatives get in. And that's why you see... Justin Trudeau survive all kinds of 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 messes. In general, he's done a, a, a good job of governing, but there's a lot of a lot of distractions that um haven't been very good for him. But what happens is when these national elections come, people are so afraid that there's gonna be some dopey conservative taking power, your O'Toole. And now they may even go further to the right. We'll see that they vote strategically. And so you, you you don't see an NDP government because people are too afraid of splitting the vote between the liberals and the NDP. This is why I think for Canadians, the most logical choice for voting and for a voting system is ranked choice voting. With ranked choice voting, you're you're voting for something. So rather than v- voting against Doug Ford and trying to find the party that will best be able to do that, 
you choose your first choice, your second choice, and your third choice. And those choices are tallied up, and and because you've you've given second choice, that's weighted a certain percentage, and and your first choice is weighted a certain percentage. So it's truly more representative of the population in general, especially with a three party system. So you see that you would see that on a national level, there would be a lot more people who wouldn't be afraid to put. Singh is their first choice, Trudeau is their second, and whoever is the conservative at the time is the third. The progressives would do that, and then, then we'd see a truly fair race without fear of of the minority party, the conservatives, controlling the majority of the people who, who didn't vote them in. And you would see that here in Ontario as well. People would vote, progressive people would would have liberals or, or NDP or green as their first or second choices. And, and all of them would have four to lower than third or maybe not even on there at all. So you would certainly see a much better representation of who wants what in this province than the current system. So I don't know if we'll see that or not. The problem is Doug Ford's not going to change the rules because it'll mean he'd never get elected again. But I, I would love for, a, a, if the next progressive government gets in, I would love for them to introduce ranked choice voting and truly let the, the, the people's vote count for who they actually want in power. Yeah, it is uh, Josh Holiday Live. You can call us. You can talk about anything you want. If you have an opinion, something's bugging you. Someone cut you off. You want to you want to get mad at that or you want to talk about uh, the pandemic and the next steps. We can do that. Since I was feeling a little bit down, I thought maybe for both of us, you and I, uh, I could play a little bit of uh, comedy to uh, lighten the mood. Um, this is a, a uh, comedian out of Vancouver, Sean Devlin. He's a filmmaker as well uh, with a Filipino background, and he has a new album called Airports Animals. And uh, I'm going to play a track from that, and uh, we'll chat in just a bit. And there's a bunch of different things you can do when you encounter racism in public. Like uh, once it happened to me at the grocery store. So I'm at the store, and I'm just buying toilet paper. And just one of my opinions, I think... Every grocery store should have at least one express checkout just for people who are only buying toilet paper, (laughs) right? Because it's so embarrassing. (laughs) We shouldn't have to mingle with the normals. (laughs) They'll be in front of you and they're like, I have a healthy diet. (laughs) All of the food groups. And you're just like, I have diarrhea. (laughs) So I'm just buying two jumbo packs of toilet paper. And then I do what you always do. You try to stuff them in the grocery bag to kind of hide them. You hope no one will notice. But the bag's never big enough. The handles just kind of come up to the corners. It just looks like a toilet paper pack wearing a very revealing top. I'm just trying to get out of this place as quickly as possible. I got these bundles of cheeky shame with me. And I have to go through a whole shopping mall. Before I can get out, this old white man with a small fancy dog barges in, cuts me off, beelines into this Tim Hortons, cuts in front of everybody in line, and then just yells at the Filipino women behind the counter. He goes, get my dog some water. I was like, oh, man, this guy's so entitled. Or he's Tim Horton. (laughs) So they bring him water. The dog drinks it. And then before he leaves, he screams again. He goes, go back to the fucking Philippines. Yeah, 
I was shocked. Everyone was shocked. Even his dog was like a bit embarrassed. <laughs> so I knew I had to say something to this guy, and as he was leaving, I asked him, I'm like, sir, why are you speaking to these women so hatefully? And he goes, well, they're stealing our jobs. And it's like, you're given a job. Somebody gives you a job. You can't actually steal a job. <laughs> It's physically impossible. <laughs> like, at best, maybe you could force your way into a workplace, grab a broom, and sweep up for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes? <laughs> but to hold that down 9 to 5? <laughs> fending everyone off? <laughs> for two whole weeks until the pay period ends? <laughs> And then they're just going to give up and go, okay, you win. Here's your paycheck, thief. <laughs> I knew I had to say something to this guy, the Tim Hortons, because the last time I encountered this kind of racism, I felt like I didn't do enough. I was at the community center. I was in the change room, and there's two white gentlemen. And one of them was about to take a trip to the Philippines. And his buddy goes, hey, you going to learn any Filipino to talk to the ladies over there? And the other guy goes, no, I'm just going to use manual Filipino. And then he went, Ugh. yeah. I was disgusted as a Filipino, as a feminist, but I didn't say anything. And I was in the shower, this guy's showering the stall next to me, and I was so angry, mostly at myself, right? And I'm just showering angrily. Nobody likes an angry shower. <laughs> <laughs> it's great for the exfoliating, but it's terrible for the soul. I'm just scrubbing, just scrubbing. And I started to think of my ancestors in the Philippines who gave their lives fighting the Spanish just so I could exist. And I thought of them, and I summoned some of their courage in this moment, and I used it to, um, I, I peed on this man. <laughs> just like, just under the shower divider thing. He didn't know, he didn't know. Feet all over his feet. <laughs> Got like his ankles, like high shin. So I didn't know that I had that in me. I don't want to get emotional now, but it honestly, it felt in that moment like, like my ancestors were peeing through me. <laughs> but then later that week, there was neo-Nazis marching in the streets. And I saw that, and I was like, I'm not doing enough. <laughs> it's not enough for me to just be hanging out in these showers, <laughs> painting these geriatric toenails yellow. <laughs> I need to do more. So I stepped to the guy at the Tim Hortons, and I'm like, sir, what you said was hateful, and I think you should leave right now. And he just looked at all the toilet paper that I was holding. <laughs> he was like, that's a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> like, he was scared of me. <laughs> but I saw an in, so I was like, do y you want some? <laughs> and he goes, yes. So I open a pack, give him a roll, and he leaves peacefully. <laughs> Hold your applause. <laughs> I'm not saying that I deserved a free donut. But I definitely looked back in the Tim Hortons, right at one of the Filipino women that was working there, and just like put out a vibe. <laughs> it was just like, hey, it's pretty cool. <laughs> and she was so scared of me, because <laughs> she thought that I was white. And we were so far away, she couldn't hear what I had said to the gentleman. So from her perspective, <laughs> what had just happened was this old white man comes in, demands water for his dog, is served politely, screams his deportation plans, which of course make her wonder, why would someone do this? And right at that moment, I come out of the shadows <laughs> of the shopping mall with admittedly a suspicious amount of toilet paper <laughs> and appear to pay this man 
for his hate crime in toilet paper. <laughs> Hi, this is a Greek rascal from Oakville Nissan and during a time in which we can barely find inventory, deals are very difficult to come by. So what I'm about to tell you is super special. If you're looking at buying a used vehicle, Come to Oakville Nissan and don't pay up to six months on approved credit. So you don't have to make a payment for up to six months on approved credit when you finance a used vehicle through Oakville Nissan. Something's happening here at OakvilleNissan.com. It is our time for Canadian soccer. York United FC begins their Canadian Premier League campaign on April 7th at York Lions Stadium. Season memberships begin at just $12 per ticket. After a semi-final run last year, 2022 promises to be something special. Get your season memberships now at yorkunitedfc.ca and guarantee you won't miss a single second of action at the best price. I'm Jeff Woods, shining a light on music and the rock stars who make it with the Records and Rockstars podcast. And John's influence, uh, he, he's, he's had a burning curiosity about everything and, and had a... Uh, just a, this uh, voracious appetite for life and uh, for what it had to offer and, and and there was nothing that passed his eye that he wasn't curious about I related to that so strongly because I was not dissimilar I was a bit quieter about it but my approach was much the same there's virtually nothing I didn't want to get involved with you know either in life or in art forms it was I was young I was burning with ambition to do something important and there was all this stuff going past and these great people and I had to meet everybody and I had to go to that play and see that movie and listen to that music and paint this and and John was very much like that he was uh, bright and funny and he was a magic guy he really was a magic guy the Records and Rockstars podcast from the radio series and from Wildwood's Blue Performance Studio all the episodes from jeffwoodsradio.com no radio no problem stream us live on saga960am.ca Josh Holiday Live is in your ear. You got something to say? Call 647-6-YO-JOSH now. For those who have been following Josh, Josh is available on Twitter at Josh Holiday and visit joshholidaylive.com. Hey, hello, it is Josh Holiday Live. And... Wow, that song uh, ended rather abruptly. <laughs> Good times. Uh, if you want to get in touch, 6476-YO-JOSH is the number to call. Here's an example of bad timing. It's been three years in the making, but now the world's largest cruise ship is finally ready to sail. Or cruise. It must have gone, gone into production just before the pandemic when people thought oh cruises are great we're going to cruise around the world what could be better being on a giant floating city and then the pandemic hit and people are like wait a second these are giant petri dishes and that was the case a little bit even before uh the covid came along there were a lot of incidences of ships that came down with um (laughs) <laughs> with, with people getting di- the, the norovirus in its various forms, which causes uh, throwing up and pooping in in, in large am- amounts. And that had hit a number of cruise ships over the years before COVID. So, so you look at these ships, and, and they're not great places for contagious diseases or sicknesses. In any case... Uh, this is a crazy feat of engineering. It's 1,188 feet long, 362 meters. Uh, it's Royal Caribbean. It's called the Wonder of the Seas, and it is uh, launching, if all goes well, today from Fort Lauderdale into the Caribbean. And uh, to give you a bit of an idea of the size of this thing, 18 decks room for 7,000 guests and 2,300 crew members. So one and a, one and a half crew, I guess for every, for every guest. Um, there's eight neighborhoods as they call them. One of which has over 20,000 
real plants. Also has a, a 10-story zip line, the world's tallest slide at sea, and a huge poolside movie screen. It was built in France. It weighs 236,857 tons and is, uh, is finally setting sail. I don't, I don't know if, if, would you go on a cruise now? If you had, if you had your, had your uh, chance, even before this, I was I was not big on on cruises. I mean, I like the idea of sort of having a a relaxing time with with, with a bunch of people, but I'm more of a, a travel. I'm I'm a restless traveler. I think I would get a little bit kind of bored being on the ship, even though they do day trips to uh, to assorted locations. Uh, I. Even when I go to a beach destination, I don't spend a lot of time on the beach. I can't be idle like that and just sit and sun, sit and hang out. I need to get out on the water, sea do, swim. Uh, I do have a trip coming up in yeah, a month and a half. Going to go to Costa Rica. That'll be my third time there. I I like going there and just exploring nature there's a lot of jungles a lot of a lot of beaches it's just an interesting place to visit ecologically cool there's lots of uh adventure stuff the first time i went i went to a, a small kind of surf yoga town neither of which i i do but i did take a surfing lesson and oh man that is hard not the surfing itself but the getting out there pushing through the waves Rented a, uh, a quad a ATV and just drove around town, went to restaurants, went up into the mountains on my own, just kind of checked stuff out. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Although I did, I did uh, roll my SUV at one point and got all scraped up on my arm and shoulder, but it's just part of having some fun. But I, I, I don't see a cruise happening. I know... My sister and mother had sort of at one point talked, well, it might be fun to go on one of these Disney cruises with uh, my nephews who are 11 and 12-year-old guys. But I think that's uh, that's been given the kibosh altogether. I was watching recently a documentary series based on a book on Netflix called surviving death and all the episodes look at different things a lot of it is is uh, i don't know if you would call it paranormal but kind of huh, what's the i'm looking for a word it's not paranormal but but maybe that's it a little bit the one that we watched was uh fascinating in that it talked about reincarnation. And there's an actual university press professor in the States who who studies this and, and does tests to try and test the veracity of, of, of what's happening with these supposedly reincarnated people. And in a lot of cases, it's children who essentially talk about a past life. And, and in some of these cases, they've tested the kids, they've shown them pictures, and these are children who are of an age where their imaginations wouldn't let them be able to make up this kind of detail or, or this, this, kind of, uh, this kind of story with, with the detail and the veracity that they do. And we see some of these kids interviewed, and, and you see him doing a test with pictures and faces, and... One of the kids, purportedly, in a, in a past life, was this soldier, a uh, fighter pilot. And this kid came up with details before, before this is before the fact. He, he hadn't seen any facts about a person or whatever, but the parents were able to get kind of names out of them, regions, and, and eventually they figured out who exactly he was in this previous life it was really, really fascinating. Uh, 
And uh, they did a study recently uh, in Estonia, and they studied what happens to you, particularly your brain, when you die. The uh, idea of your life flashing before your eyes has, has been a cultural expression for, for many, many years. And now they're saying there's actual brain activity during death. The data suggests that our brains continue working not only as we pass away, but in the seconds following a heart stoppage. And they say record, recorded brain gamma waves during death were similar to those that occur during dreaming and meditation. For example, uh, time, essentially Albert Einstein once said that time is relative, meaning the perceived rate by which time passes depends on the person and situation. So if you're waiting for the clock to reach five on a Friday, it can feel like an eternity, but the weekend usually goes by in a blink of an eye. So they talk a little bit about could your brains really replay an entire lifetime's worth of memories and moments within a matter of seconds. And uh, there's a lot of people who have had near-death experiences who say as much, but up until now, neuroscientists have struggled to kind of make sense of what happens in the mind during and immediately after death. The latest research uh, shows some evidence that the brain remains both active and coordinated after the death transition, as they call it. And they further suggest that this life replay is a programmed biological response that comes naturally to human brains, maybe other species as well. So the, the study sort of, th this data came somewhat accidentally. They were monitoring an 87-year-old epilepsy patient who was near the end of their life, and they used an EEG, basically a brain scan, to de detect the patient's seizures and provide treatment. Unfortunately, during one of these sessions where they were recording the EEG, the patient had a heart attack and died. So it was somewhat coincidental that they got the data and recorded the brain waves as this person was dying. Uh, here's the quote. We measured 900 seconds of brain activity around the time of death and set a specific focus to investigate what happened in the 30 seconds before and after the heart stopped beating. Just before and after the heart stopped working, we saw changes in a specific band of neural oscillations, so-called gamma oscillations, but also in others such as delta, theta, alpha, and beta oscillations. So what does that mean? Well, brain os oscillations or brain waves are various patterns of brain activity in uh, living human brains. So different waves serve different pur purposes. Gamma waves have a connection to high cognitive functions, such as meditation, concentration, dreaming, memory retrieval, information processing, conscious perception, uh, and even memory flashbacks. Another quote. Through generating oscillations involved in memory retrieval, the brain may be playing a last recall of important life events just before we die, similar to the ones reported in near-death experiences. These findings challenge our understanding of when exactly life ends and generate important subsequent questions, such as those related to the timing of organ donation. This is the first documented case of uh, human brain activity during death, but scientists have uh, recorded similar brainwave fluctuations in the brains of rats, which suggests that this may be uh, a cross-species thing where, where you have these waves through death. Uh, this is Dr. Zemmer. Uh, this is his conclusion. He says, as a neurosurgeon, I deal with loss at times. It is indescribably difficult to deliver the news of death to distraught family members. Something we, wait, something we may learn from this, ex this research is, although our loved ones have their eyes closed and are ready to leave us to rest, their brains may be replaying some of the nicest moments they experienced in their lives. So I guess that's, if you want to silver, silver line it a little bit, that, that might help. One of the other episodes of this uh, show I watched about death and what happens around it uh, on Netflix, it's called Surviving Death, based on, based on a book by the same name. 
uh, was one where, where people who are near death experience visions of people who are close to them who have already died visiting them as, I don't know if you want to call it apparitions or um, figures or, or it, it could, could be their brain doing tricks, but they see these people and believe that they are as real as anything else in their life, that these, these people are actually present and comforting them. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty cool documentary series. And I will say this. Uh, it sort of has tinges of, of conspiracy theory, kind of kind of um, parapsychology, para, para, paranormal parapsychology, uh, but sort of on the interesting fun side. There used to be a bunch of conspiracy theory type radio shows, your uh, art bells and stuff, and a lot of times they were kind of fun kind of curiosities because they would talk about ufos which i i kind of i'm a believer in ufos i think it's it's um really short-sighted not to believe that there's other intelligent life in the universe it's very it's very small-minded in in such a huge universe i i believe in some form of alien life whether it's actually happened here but there's there's more and more resources coming out that suggests maybe something's up also very much interested in ghosts and the paranormal and those types of things. And I like those shows and, and sometimes they're entertaining. They would talk about lizard people and dog men and hidden, <laughs> hidden stuff. But in a lot of ways, those types of shows have lost the plot. And before it was sort of harmless kind of speculation and, and, and rumination about odd things. A lot of times now it's, straightforward misinformation that's very, very dangerous. Misinformation about a stolen election. Misinformation about COVID, about the vaccine, about where the the COVID originated, how dangerous it is, about masks. People have died because they've been fed misinformation by conspiracy theory type shows. And you've also seen that paranoia that brought forth the, the big trucker rallies being amped up by, uh, by right wing media and, and conspiracy theory media amping these people up and feeding them disinformation that makes them angry. And a lot of times there's a crossover between that misinformation source and, and a lot of people who are in that scene also have roots in white nationalism and hate. That's very frustrating. As I said, I uh, it's been a bit of a weird week. I've, I've felt a real, felt really kind of down. So I did say I was going to maybe share some comedy with you. And uh, I've seen this guy a number of times and have been in the audience for uh, some of his tapings for his CDs. Uh, he's one of the greats. Uh, it's Jim Gaffigan. I haven't eaten in like 40 minutes. That's weird for me. <laughs> Americans, we love to eat. You know, when we're not eating, we're chewing gum. We're literally practicing eating. <laughs> yeah, I got a big meal coming up. Training for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving. That is all about overeating. I mean, one of the main dishes is actually called stuffing. <laughs> stuffing? What names did they turn down? Cram it in? <laughs> Eat till you can't breathe? Am I the only one that doesn't feel comfortable with the fact stuffing is cooked inside a dead animal? <laughs> Shove a loaf of bread up there? Mmm, Delicious. <laughs> Kind of a humiliating way to go out for the turkey. You're going to kill me? Oh, it's going to get a lot worse. <laughs> you do not want to know. <laughs> My problem is I love all the food that's bad for you, like bacon. We know you like bacon. <laughs> and 
fried chicken. You ever put a piece of fried chicken on a paper napkin, you come back and the napkins turn into liquid? <laughs> fried chicken can't be good for you, really. I mean, one of the serving sizes is bucket. <laughs> Buck. Isn't that how we feed farm animals? Yeah, I have a bucket of fried chicken, a silo of Pepsi, and a trough of pig slop. Make the pig slop diet. Speaking of pig slop, have you tried one of those KFC bowls? It's like KFC as a corporation decided, you know, all our crap tastes the same. Why don't we just throw it in a bowl? And I'll tell you, it's delicious. It has a layer of mashed potatoes, a layer of corn, a layer of cigarette butts, a couple of apple cores. It's like Charlotte's Web. Where's Templeton? Popeyes is my favorite fried chicken. I love Popeyes. I love that name. Oh, I get it. Popeye was a sailor, and your food goes through me like a torpedo. That makes sense. Popeye ate spinach, and now I have dysentery. Popeye had muscles. I can't stand up. Maybe they're not talking about the cartoon character Popeye. Maybe they're talking about what happens to your eyes after you eat the food. I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> I eat the fast food, I do. It's amazing how our attitude on fast food changes. When you're a kid, it's your favorite place. But as an adult, you look at fast food like someone you used to date. <laughs> I can't believe I ever went there. <laughs> then the next night, well, it's late. <laughs> and I'm drunk, so... We're all so embarrassed to eat fast food. You ever go in there, everyone's sitting by themselves, they're hunched over, wearing a ski mask. <laughs> Don't tell my wife I'm here! They know we're embarrassed to eat fast food. That's why they invented the drive through Look, no one has to see it. Just drive around back, we'll hand it out the window. That drive through is pretty convenient, right? Except for that final stretch for your food. You're like, uh, can you bring your building closer to my car? <sighs> do I have to do everything? What a pain in the ass. Why is he reaching out the passenger side of the car? <laughs> These fast food places are so fast and easy. They've ruined me for regular restaurants. Whenever I'm at a regular restaurant, I'm always like, let's see, I will order the hamburger. Where is it? <laughs> Uh, sir, how would you like your hamburger done? Uh, right now, where is it? <laughs> and can you wrap it in paper so I feel like I'm opening a present? <laughs> or maybe put it in a styrofoam clamshell and present it like an engagement ring? <gasps> I do. <laughs> Too bad all the food at fast food places is so bad for you. I love how there's the option of a milkshake. You're like, well, I shouldn't, but I'm in a hurry, so I'll get a burger and fries, and to drink, I'll have the large cup of melted ice cream. <laughs> Do you have an EKG machine back there? <laughs> Most restaurants try and set a mood. You know, you go in there, you're like, oh, I feel like I'm in a Tuscan villa. <laughs> Fast food places are brightly lit, smell like disinfectant, the furniture's bolted down. <laughs> Where am I, a mental institution? <laughs> we got to get out of here! Imagine having over 100 TV multi-language channels at your fingertips. Imagine having over 100 multi-language radio stations at your fingertips. Now, imagine an app that lets you watch or listen to all of this amazing entertainment whenever or wherever you want. Now, imagine it's all free. eBaba is the reality in mobile entertainment. Download eBaba for iOS or Android. Turn imagination into reality at eBaba. 
Most people don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. Let financial advisor Jeff McGilvery help you plan for today and protect for tomorrow. For over 14 years, Jeff has proudly helped people just like you achieve their financial goals and support their future with his unique 360 degree process. Jeff and his team of professionals can help you and your finances work smarter, not harder in protecting your hard earned money, whether it's it's life insurance, group insurance, living benefits, investments, or financial planning. Jeff McGilvery is the go-to guy here to help plan for your future. All you got to do is go to askjeff.ca, the go-to guy. That's askjeff, G-E-O-F-F dot C-A. That's askjeff dot C-A. Across Ontario, more workers are joining the skilled trades as resources and industries in the north become part of the future of clean steel and electric vehicles. More jobs are being created as bridges and highways are built for a growing province. Ontario's economy is getting stronger. See what's happening at Ontario.ca slash stronger. Paid for by the Government of Ontario. Stream us live at saga960am.ca. I was like that. You all know that thing you use to send text? Yeah! It also works for actual mouth talking. Get in on the conversation now. Punch 647 6Yo Josh to be heard. Talk that rocks. Josh Holiday live. This is Josh Holiday live. Hello. Weird show. It's feeling kind of down. For most of the week, played you some comedy, both for you and for me. Uh, the show is winding down. If uh, if you need to get in touch, you're hearing a, a replay of the show, or perhaps you're listening to the podcast. That doesn't mean you can't be a part of the fun. You can dial six four seven six Yo Josh any darn time you like twenty four seven. You can leave a message that may get played on the show. You can text that same number if you have a, a message you want to send that way. If you go to uh, Josh Holiday Live, you'll find all the old episodes. And if you want a bunch of social stuff, I think the easiest way uh, to to follow this show is to go to saga960am.ca. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's cheered me up a little bit being here and in, 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 uh, doing this. And I hope you have a, a good weekend and uh, we'll see you uh, around this time next week. Turn on the lights, open the shades. The show's over, but the conversation continues. On Twitter at Josh Holiday, on the web at joshholidaylive.com, and hear missed episodes on your favorite podcatcher. Talk that rocks. Josh Holiday Live.
lot of people 